So today I'm in Wellington to say thank you, Ika, for helping us into electric vehicles. It's only been 12 months. So Andy, tell me, what does Ika do? So our purpose is to mobilise New Zealanders to be world leaders in clean and clever energy use. So we have a strong focus on the business community with helping them decarbonise their activities. We're working in the transport sector and hence why we have the fund and supporting organisations like Asthma New Zealand or the energy sector that we're focused on. You know, what you've got as your objective as an organisation just fitted so neatly from one, your commitment to demonstrate EVs as the technology of the future around our mode of transport and also substantial improvement in the air quality. It's a huge additional benefit that we get. Were you aware of just how significant the transport emissions were from the fuel that we use in the transport fleet before you took the initiative to move to electric? I had no idea. All I knew was that I was staring at a whole lot of fossil fuel vehicles that emissed fumes that are not good for people with asthma and respiratory conditions. New Zealand's had the second highest rate of asthma death in the world for 20 years. That's unacceptable for a country like this. And so from an Asthma New Zealand perspective, we needed to cause New Zealand to make some significant changes to improve this. And one of the areas is definitely the quality of air that we're breathing. We think that we're breathing in really great air, but you only need to be living by a motorway or in a suburban area to know the impact of all of the vehicles that we have. As a charity, you know, we're serving people with asthma and, and, and respiratory issues. If we're driving around in fossil full vehicles, I'm not sure what sort of message that communicates. It's ironic in a way that here we are driving down Lampton Key in Wellington and the fund supported some of the earlier electric vehicle buses that are being utilised now on some of the key runs here as we have in Auckland with some of the routes down Queen Street and the like which sort of typify the point you make about those significant health benefits that apply from getting fumes out of concentrated urban areas like this so you know it, it, it really does have a lot of benefits in addition to just our emission reduction so that's wonderful to hear. How difficult has it been to get your people on board? Do you know when I first mentioned this to my team they could understand why we were going to do it without question though they were apprehensive but the thing that we did with them was we introduced them to the vehicles long before we actually had vehicles so we took them to GBI and introduced them to electric vehicles they got to sit and to drive around in them they already knew what what it was like and they were all quite surprised they were expecting it to have no power to be you know very different than what they're used to driving and they jumped in them and it was no different apart from they had to think a little bit in terms of when they charge how they charge so I think they would all tell you that they went through the range anxiety um, but that didn't last too long now they understand they know pretty much how far they can go and so they're quite comfortable about that. That is such a valid point because one of the first things that we ever say to an organisation who is looking at taking their first step in this is understand your vehicle usage as it sits and most organisations can quite easily even reduce 20% of the number of vehicles they've got, just yep. by the data benefit that they get from analysing what they're already doing, which makes it that much easier to take the step. One thing I'm really keen to hear about as well is the charging. How have you coped with that side of it? Because a lot of people see that as, an, as another barrier, but one which we think can frequently be very easily overcome. This is where Singer Electrical and ABB were exceptional, you know, just looking at what we needed. So the one decision that we did make was that we would put the charging units into all of the nurses' homes, as well as all of our work sites. So they don't need to go very far and they can charge overnight if need be. 
And that's one of the key things, making people understand that the best place that they can charge, if they can charge, is at home. Yep. Overnight, in off-peak periods, you're gonna get the cheapest per kilowatt hour rate. Yep. Um, you're gonna have the convenience, it's when the, the vehicle's not being used for an extended period. Look, I think what you've done is, is fantastic as well and something that the fund was happy and available to support as well around that charging side. That's where I, I can't underestimate the value of the fund here because it helped us navigate all of that. This, for us, was such a, an easy transition because this was about sending a really strong message to people. The quality of air that we breathe makes a huge difference to the quality of life that we live. And we've got to take that seriously. I would love to think that people are moving into electric vehicles to reduce carbon emissions so the planet has an ability to restore itself. If they can't get their head around that, then please, at minimum, get into electric vehicles so the humans on this planet can replenish themselves. And no doubt you would have been delighted with the very recent government announcement around the clean car discount that's just going to help it hopefully make a little easier for people to take that step and move from their ICE internal combustion engine vehicles to hopefully fully, fully electric. I think, you know, people have got to understand that every vehicle will make a difference. It doesn't matter the size of the fleet. What was the support of your board like? Were they, were they very supportive? The board have been incredibly supportive of all the initiatives for ASMA New Zealand. Bearing in mind, you know, our mission is a 50% reduction in asthma and COPD hospitalisation by 2029. There is a lot that we need to do because at the moment our hospital admissions account for 1 in 10. So we've got a lot of work to do. between ECA and ASMA New Zealand with what you're doing, what we're doing on behalf of government with, with this fund and also the Warmer Kiwi Homes Programme, you know, that, that issue about having far fewer Kiwis who are subject to respiratory problems of one sort or another, you know, we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna knock it off over time and that's such a, a heartening and, and in many respects humbling initiative when you see the difference it makes. It really gets you up in the morning doing stuff, doesn't it? Well, that's exactly right. And I think, you know, the thing is, is that, you know, if COVID did remind us of one other thing, we are a family of five million. And if we all come together, if we all do our part, we all have a part to play, I think we could make some real massive progress in so many of the areas that we're battling with. We could certainly address them faster than if we try and work on our own.